So on this episode, we have a little interview with Sean. He talks about the build, explains why he did it, and a lot about the bike. These episodes are coming to an end. There's one more after this. So make sure you subscribe. If you haven't seen all the prior ones, go ahead and go back. And then we're gonna be moving on to a lot of different content. So take it away, Sean. Sean Roberts, Las Vegas, Nevada, Sin City. I have a mini bike because I didn't want to buy a big bike. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> honestly. I did this build because everybody is kind of the same in a sense. Everyone just does a big board kit on a Grom or they go Grom fathers if they have the money. And there's a handful of people with 300s and I'll be the second one in Vegas. So I figured I'd give it a shot. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to spend the 4200 for a brand new Grom. I wanted something new. So I got a clone for less than a thousand bucks and I used it for what it was. I swapped the motor in it and I basically did tasteful well, what I thought was tasteful mods here and there just to get me by. Now I'm in, in this build, still probably just a little bit over what it would cost somebody to buy a stock Grom. I bought a clone and fit a 300 inside of it for about the same price as an OEM Grom from the dealership. I feel like once you have the ZS190 and you go 212 four valve, the 212 cc piston and the four valve head that the motor is great and it runs good and has a lot of power but that's pretty much all you can do at that point i mean yeah you can machine the case and put in a bigger piston and hope for a couple of horsepower unreliable horsepower in my opinion and the 300 just is more horsepower or equivalent horsepower to a zs190 with the potential of making more horsepower reliably and not having to order from overseas every time something breaks or goes wrong. I just go right to the Honda dealer, order what I need. There's off the shelf performance parts. It's a really um, popular engine. There's a 300 class uh, spec racing and the capabilities are kind of endless and a lot greater than you can get with a China 212, which I still have in my spare bike as a buddy bike. So whoever um, decides to come for a ride, they can just jump on that and then I'll ride the 300. And so I got the best of both worlds, basically. Do you like men? <laughs> no. That's kind of a tough one, uh, honestly. The bigger bike, I feel like it's a different community. And once you go into a bigger bike, you're talking about, I mean, if you want to be fast and keep up with even some of the slower guys that race, you're going to be in a lot more than, you know, finding a 300 motor for a thousand bucks or something. That's just, it's two different price levels. And for my skill level and just being on the road for about two years I felt like it was appropriate for me to start with a smaller bike and um, I kind of fell in love with most of the community I mean there's bad apples here and there but for the most part the mini bike community is kind of cool they stick together there's pretty decent rides and I feel like it's a good starting point that once I master this eventually I can graduate to a bigger bike and um, see where that takes me. Future plans. Um, I noticed that the bike is a little heavier so I want to do something with the front suspension and replace the springs and I could use a rear shock too to support the extra weight and make it a little stiffer. A headlight, I want to do uh, like a one-off headlight eventually and get that dialed in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got some light poles underneath my belt. 
<laughs> yeah, summertime, summer cruise, uh, Super Sunday 2019. Uh, I'm gonna be bringing it out there for that too. Uh, completely different than it was last year, different color scheme. Um, obviously this bike was built from the frame up so everything got converted to oem rom parts equivalent or aftermarket yeah i just want to see the difference and all the different performance parts and the tuning capabilities i want to see how far i can take uh the 300 the way that it is with the a racer and see what kind of numbers i can get in the increases of you know doing a bolt on a big bore kit maybe cams um, some head work, some, some stuff like that. I just want to see how reliable the engine is and how far I can take it with its current setup. You know, I feel really good about the build. It was supposed to be a winter time project, like over the span of, you know, five months, I plan on doing this. And we ended up getting some extra funds and ordering everything within like a three day <laughs> Um, span so I had the parts and luckily Pat had the time to help me and we did it and I don't know I want to say like 30 days it was completely nice. finished less than 30 days from start to finish from the frame up all the parts yeah the custom brackets everything went together in less than 30 days from start to finish so yeah it went together a, a lot faster than i thought what are you most excited about, about this build um it's probably pretty cheesy and simple but i'm just excited to have six gears and not be at you know 55 miles per hour at 5500 rpm in fifth gear yeah that's pretty much what i'm most excited about and i have the same power that i had in my 212 four valve which was kind of a built motor i dropped in the 300 and it's bone stock and it's putting out similar to the same power right off the bat so yeah. was probably driving <laughs> to North Town, which if you're not familiar with Las Vegas, is clear the fuck on the other side of town and uh, sitting in traffic, waiting and waiting and waiting for the brackets to be cut correctly and everything to line up. Um, lots of anxiety, just waiting to see the motor actually be bolted to the frame, mounted under its own weight, and uh, once that happened, once I saw the motor in the bike and I knew everything was going to fit with the rear sets and whatnot, that was a good feeling. That was a real good feeling. I felt like it was just a home stretch after the motor was mounted. That was, that was the hard part. The reason why I went with the Shocker Yellow was I was open to ideas. I was kind of back and forth on a few different color choices but uh, my buddy pat who helped me with this build and editing this video he suggested the color and he showed it to me and he's been on my back basically since day one since i had my other bike to switch to that color or try it and see if i liked it and I didn't really know how I felt about it, but I saw it in person in the sunlight and that's kind of what set me off with that color scheme. And then we went, I don't want to say wild with it, but we did the foot pegs, the brake levers, the triples, um, the motor brackets, the wheels, just tasteful stuff here and there that we could throw in and get in that same color. It looks really good and it goes good with the white, so that's why. I went that route. The most difficult part of this build was dealing with that shit. <laughs> um, I want to say honestly, the most difficult part was just having the funds to knock everything out because it's like a giant puzzle and everything has to go together. It has to be compatible with each other and the bike can't be finished unless you have all the pieces to the puzzle so I had to knock out um, a big chunk of the parts all at once 
So um, even around tax season, money was an issue. Yeah, luckily I just came across some extra funds. I pulled some strings and made some stuff happen to get it done. Other than that, probably the fabrication on the gas tank. It's got a custom three gallon gas tank, which was kind of cool. I used a clone gas tank along with a Grom fuel pump and fuel line and everything else. So I had to figure out a way to stuff a fuel pump in a place in an area in a bike that it was never meant to be. That turned out to be uh, quite difficult. We have a good fabrication guy, which you'll see in the video that did it all for me. Shout out to Trev Tech Motorsports, Las Vegas. Oh, regrets. Uh, I can't say that I have any regrets, man. No regrets, no regrets. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I'm glad that I swapped to Brembo's first off because I've always had squishy ass brakes. What really draws my attention is just the color scheme, um, the shocker yellow, along with the wrap on the sides of the bike here and on the gas tank here. Um, with the pin striping along the sides, the triples, it's just a lot to look at all at once and a lot to draw your attention. And I originally wasn't gonna do it, but again, I had that monkey pat on my shoulder telling me, oh, you gotta wrap it, you gotta wrap it. And luckily he uh, decided to wrap it for me one day out of the kindness of his heart, which if you need any wrapping, you can hit up Patrick on social media or whatever. He does wrap forks and as you can tell the quality it's really good and I like it and I think that that really stands out in the bike and uh, the craftsmanship really shows well there was uh, no sponsorship unfortunately luckily the person who was helping me I was helping him assemble this bike um, with him building the bike and doing most of the assembly. He happens to be a dealer through Steady Garage. So we got a lot of mainly everything through them, which really helped a lot to get everything from one place. Local shops, Trev Tech Motorsports here in town. Trevor is a good guy, helped me out with my gas tank fabrication, the exhaust fabrication, um, 6651 Customs here in Las Vegas for the plasma cut mounting brackets and my personal bank account <laughs> and most importantly a big shout out to my girlfriend for giving me the time letting me kind of do what i wanted to do with building the bike and all the time and effort and funds that went into it uh, that was a big help to having support on the home front so I just want to say thanks, babe. This one's for you. Uh, would I suggest people to go CBR 300 swap? Fuck no. It's not the best idea ever for reliability, performance, and uh, pretty much bolt-on power. Honestly, what I feel is that no, it's not for everyone because not everyone gives a shit about having you know, the most power, being the fastest. It's just not needed in a small bike, and I understand that. The the real purest of a Grom, there's no need for it. It's meant to be a small bike, easy to maneuver, nimble, um, just the way it comes. You can stunt it, you can track it, you can do whatever you want. But on the other side of things, if you're leaning more towards performance, then when we're talking, the most bang for your buck, dollar for dollar, you really can't beat what you get for this swap. The, the price of the engine, the price of all the supporting mods that you need to run it, yeah, you, you just, you can't beat it. For someone that's pushing in that direction, that's exactly, that's exactly the direction that you should go because it just makes the most sense and it, the 300 out of all the swaps you can put in your bike, I would say is up there like top tier in, in the swap section, I guess. There's, there's not really a better way to put it. I wanna say that if you have a clone <laughs> and you plan on doing this, just 
be prepared. Grom guys, you're good to go. Everything is pretty much, it's like this motor is meant for this bike. If you got a clone, you're in for it. You're gonna have to, I suggest starting from a bare frame and just fighting tooth and nail all the way up. And thanks to Pat, my man over here, put in a lot of his own time and effort. Yeah, I couldn't have done it without him. So my final word and my final thank you goes to Pat. All right, thanks so much, Sean, for the interview and letting me be a part of the build. I do appreciate the things that he did say. So if you guys could do me a favor, go follow him on Instagram, go subscribe to him on his YouTube channel. He is starting to upload videos. Other than that, we have one more episode. Click the subscribe, click the like button, it helps. It bumps us up in the YouTube algorithm. I don't really care about the likes, but YouTube does. So to put us seen to other people, the likes definitely help. And if you want, leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts on this project. Should he have just gotten a Grom? Should he have gotten a bigger bike? I don't know, you tell us. So don't forget Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm gonna stick to that upload for the next few videos. I have some really cool videos coming out after this. I went on a trip to Barber Motorsports with Brandon and with Ed from Scooter Swap Shop. Those videos are coming soon. So if you wanna see those, click the notification bell and you'll get notified when they go up. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon. Peace. Oh, man. <laughs> you wanna see? It makes your face look super fat. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> stole from all the children in Africa to find my <laughs> I started a back page for Filipinos. <laughs> I started a casting couch for Filipinos. All right, so we're recording. Yep, hold on, let me hit my bait. I'm gonna blow one right in the right middle. I don't know if that's good for the lens. Who are you? My name is Sean Roberts from Las Vegas, Nevada. Sin City. You were talking really quiet. Ah! Ah! Just talk how you're gonna talk. Oh, I'm talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking. Talk I'm, 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 I'm gonna talk how I'm talking right now. So, my check. So, how much did you suck for that extra funds? <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to do the shocker yell? <clears throat> And the color scheme on the bike. Uh, the shocker yellow. Um, I was just taking a shit one day on the toilet, and the color just popped into my head. And <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I can edit it out. I I'll say that. Like, do you have any final words or bullshit to talk about? Oh, would you suggest the build for anybody? Oh, yeah, good one. Mm. Would, would you suggest going to a 300 and maybe be like, no, I don't want anybody to go there. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is so not the best idea this ever. Is, this is for only ballers. Yeah, you ask the like, question and then and beat it. And you'd be like, uh, going 300? Fuck no! Don't go 300. And then you'd be like, Burr! you hit the air horn. First of all, what should I put the subtitles as? So I'm gonna put the subtitles wrong, but only the Filipinos will be like, oh no, he said this instead. Yeah. So what What the should I- The subtitles should yeah. be like, I can't believe I'm working on such an amazing piece of art. And yeah. then he's like, I can't believe these fucking white people spend this much money on trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. So, okay. while I'm working so on what it. is, what is, what is Paulo really saying? Because I'll put this literally at the no. very, the last, the last video, the last everything, I'll put what what it actually is at the very end, the, the like last thing. Uh, yeah, exactly what I said. So what was it? That something like uh. No, I, I can't I'm so I'm so happy I got to work on this amazing bike with these people. That should be the caption, and I'm gonna put. And, and what are you gonna These crazy say? fucking white people spending all this money on these pieces of shit. The piece of shit toy bikes. Okay. Get a man's bike. Buy a one thousand. <laughs> All right. No, you, that that would end up sad. Didn't know what I'm. Okay, saying. so I'm you gonna I'm gonna ask you, and you're gonna look at the camera and tell me 
in Filipino Tagalog, in Tagalog. I'm talking shit, but you're gonna And then subtitle. when I get when I get when you get done, so don't say anything while he's saying stuff. So Paulo, what do you what do you think about getting to you know tighten one bolt or help a little bit on this whole build? Don't move. I said that ulong pinoy. Or no, let's start that over. I fucked that up. I could I said these crazy Filipinos. <laughs> Oh, I have it even better. So I'm going to ask you, or I'm going to say, say in your language, or how would you say in your language how you feel about this, right? And then you're going to say it, and I'm going to be like, so what did that mean? And then he'll say, well, not what it really means, but he won't, what he wants us to mean, it to mean. Yeah, Does that make yeah. sense? I'm, tell, I'm telling you what you want to hear. Exactly, but you're, you're actually, actually talking you shit in your language. Opinion, yeah. And so then I don't have to use subtitles. You know what I'm saying? And at the very end, I'll put in like what it actually means. So Paulo, what do you, how do you feel about working on this amazing machine? You know, being able to actually do a couple bolts and help a little bit. In your own language, how would you say that? Nasisiraan na ng ulo itong mga putong tao na itong basura na ito. Walang kwenta. So what does that mean in English? You know, it's a really amazing piece of art. I'm glad that I got to work on it, you know? Glad to be part of the team, brother. Sweet. Right on. Okay, Paula, what did you actually say? Dude, these fucking crazy white people spending money on trash. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's so that's for, for your Filipino, for all the Filipino watchers. Hopefully you catch it in the video, but this is obviously the end of the video, so you get to see it.